everyone. All right, we are live. Jennifer Wayner, how are you? Good, Mike. How are you? I'm doing really good. I'm doing really good. I'm so happy that you uh, have a couple minutes here to sit down with me uh, this afternoon, at least uh, in, in the eastern part of the United States. I know you're around lunchtime there. Um, so let's get started. Um, I, I, as I told you, kind of when we were when we were setting the platform for uh, for what we would talk about today, you know, we're really just going to discuss uh, kind of your journey. Um, and what what I'm hoping to do is that you know, that agent or there's that agent or that broker out there that can identify with kind of what you went through and um, uh, hopefully provide some or shed some light on, you know, uh, on helping them make the transition either to EXP or, or whatever other company that they're looking at. But we hope they come to EXP. So um, so let's get started. I don't like to spend a lot of time on like, you know, production and all that, but I'll, I'll do that just to kind of um, just to kind of lay the foundation for, um, for you uh, and so that the audience can get to know you. So how long have you been in real estate? 15 years. Okay. So 15 years in real estate. And what was your volume last year? Last year was 78 million. We did 198 homes. Okay. So 198 homes for 70 million bucks. That's huge. 78. <laughs> That's great. No, yeah. So good for you. So, okay. So what, what company, when, well, first of all, when did you move over to EXP? April of this year. Okay. So you came over April of 2018 and what company were you at before you moved over? I was with Remax. Okay. So came over from Remax. And so tell me a little bit about like when you first heard about EXP, um, what your reaction was. Well, um, kind of a little background. I had, um, I had met Dan Beer at a, um, a an education event. It was a through a Fidelity uh, title company, and I was so impressed with him and his business model that I offered to pay him last year five thousand dollars just to go to his office for a day. And um, and I got the idea because a month before I had um, bid seven thousand dollars to spend a um, a day in the um, office of a, one of the top coaches in the nation okay. and came back directly problem back then. I went on nine listing appointments and lost all nine. So it was a problem in my business. Yeah. So I was like, okay, I'm going to go spend um, a day with Warren Flax, awesome agent. Um, one of the top real trends agents, top coach and came back and I um, took the next seven listing appointments I went on. So I immediately saw that just by plugging in and aligning myself with, um, you know, people where I wanted to be, he was really great at listings. I directly saw the GCI. So when I had met Dan, I, I was fresh off of our meeting with uh, Warren. I did the same thing. So I was really impressed with him. I'd actually been friends with Kyle Whistle and have a, really respected the business that he created. Um, I've known him for about eight years. So when they announced together in February um, that they moved, I obviously, even though I had heard of EXP, I that's when that's what got me to pick up the phone and be like, okay, what's going on here? What is this all about? And then once I learned what it was all about, I couldn't sleep. And two weeks later, um, signed the lease on the office space that I'm at now, and um, and moved a month later after we had to build this out. So I was um, I I didn't it didn't take me long to see. Um, you know, so much of the the opportunity that it was to be aligned with people like Dan Beer and Kyle Whistle and Mary Maloney. Sure. So, okay. So selfishly, I want to ask, what was the difference between you going on nine listing appointments and not taking any, and then you going on the next what seven or eight and taking them all? What what happened there? What was the what was the well, it was, um, you know, asking the right questions. Really, um, I, I I offered the same value before and after, but it was really being able to present my value. So my so the clients that I was meeting with, like they saw what we had to offer, and you know, it it was really just presenting in a different way. Yeah. When was it? So you've been in the business for fifteen years. Like when was it that your business really started to take off? That was two thousand fourteen. Okay. That's when I started to do quantum leaps every year. Um, and what happened in 2014 is I started coaching. So when you start, when I started coaching, you're starting to align yourself with people that are really running real estate as a business, not just, you know, at your office water cooler, you know, with the people that like show up in the office and, and, and gossip about how bad the market is. 
yeah. you know, by really like aligning yourself with people that are really running real estate as a business. So I knew the power of alignment. Um, really, I didn't really understand the value of it until I would say about 2014. Yeah. And and then when you understood it, that's when your business started to take off. That's awesome. It's it's interesting. Like we're all kind of interconnected because I knew Dan Beer as well. And I actually met Dan Beer probably back in, um, I want to say probably 2015. I met Dan Beer because he and I were both coaching with a guy named Lars Hedenborg. And oh, yeah. Lars had an event that was in Charlotte, North Carolina. And I met Dan there. Um, and I met some other, some other top agents. Uh, you know, Tara Lindberg? I don't think she so. was a big Remax agent in Arkansas. Uh, okay. And uh, and Damon Gatier. There, there was just there was a, a, just a lot of people there. It was it was a pretty cool event. But anyway, um, I digress. So, OK, so so really, I mean, you've you've really come on here in about the last four years with your business and, and just kind of grown it exponentially. And um, now, and now you see the true value of taking that all that money that you're making and reinvesting in yourself, I would suppose, right? Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, so tell me a little bit about how your team is structured right now. So we, uh, we have been in growth mode. Um, so we have, uh, I have a listing manager, marketing manager, transaction coordinator. Uh, we have our own in-house uh, photographer, videographer, um, and we have an inside sales team and outside sales team. So our inside sales team, we have three right now. So they're, one, they're the ones that are taking um, calls, matching them with agents. And then our outside sales agents can work with buyers and sellers. And we have um, 10 outside sales agents. Okay. And how long have you been structured that way? Is that is that since before you already XP or has this all happened just here in the last few months? Um, I started an inside sales agent uh, 2015. Um, last year was the first year that we really started to build the inside sales team because our, and we're taking six to 700 leads a month. Um, so we, it was too much for one. It's actually too much for three. And we've been, we've been doing some restructuring on the ways that we, the opportunities we give our agents. So they're able to plug in and, um, utilize, uh, work pretty much as an ISA to, um, as well. So more of like an agent on duty model. Okay, so what is your goal for 18? Well, our goal is 300 homes. We are on track for that, 100 million in volume. Um, really, this year, um, we've been restructuring things, um, growing agent count. I had really only four agents, including myself, last year. And so this year, we're really, we have the infrastructure, infrastructure to support so much more. Um, next year, we should um, be... So, Probably we're, we'll do business planning later this year, but next year, um, my our goal will be 400 homes. Wow, that in that is super impressive because you're in a hyper competitive market. I mean, I know there's people out there uh, like Brett Tanner and Curtis Johnson. I mean, there's there's some big hitters in your marketplace. So to to hear that you're taking you know you, you know you're you're taking on a goal of you know 400 homes sold. That's uh, that's pretty impressive, and you're on your way to do 100 million this year. So um, I, I'm curious, like. When you transitioned over um, to EXP, tell me a little bit how, about how that was. Like, did that affect your production at all, or, or was it just like you guys flipped the switch and, and you were rolling? Oh yeah, no, um, definitely did not uh, affect production. I mean, really, it was just like how we had to build out the office, which I wish, really wish we would have done this, you know, last year because the culture I've been able to create just by having my own office space and control them when we meet clients here, it's, it's been amazing. Um, but it was really just marketing, you know, changing out signs and websites and, and, and all of that, you know. Yeah. So, um, you know, we're, you know, I didn't really look at like my brokerage, like, oh yeah, my brokerage is helping me build my business. Yeah. You know, I've been real estate for 15 years and no broker has ever helped me build my business. Everything I've built has been on my own. So EXP, I didn't really look at it like, oh, I, I, it's a brokerage. I'm looking to get so much out of the brokerage. I mean, they do have a lot of value. There's a lot of classes, but the alignment I've been able to have and I, I can, the, you know, the great thing is my business has challenges this year that didn't have last year just because of where we've grown and being able to call Dan Beer and be like, Hey, and he's like, yeah, I, I was in your spot two years ago. This is what I did. The power of that being, being able to get past these challenges that have been, um, 
you know, been in my business this year has been, I mean, you can't really put uh, a, a dollar amount on that. And it's just so much value. Yeah, I definitely agree. And you know, you said something that really resonated with me because one of the big reasons we actually moved here from Keller Williams is the fact that we had an opportunity to kind of create our own culture. So we're in a, a 3,200 uh, square foot office space right now. And it is, we literally have just our team in here with the exception of two people because I own an investment company too. And then we have another agent that came over from Keller Williams. But it is so cool because now it's it's just us. And like literally everybody here has been handpicked to be here. So we have such a great environment. Tell me, what does that mean for you? My Having my own office space? Yeah, and your own community, your own culture. Yeah. Well, I mean, I know where I was at, you know, my office before, you know, is more like closed doors, you know, like agents just not wanting to share, you know, like kind of like hoarding, you know, kind of like hoarding any information they might have. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I, there would be times it would be, you know, agent, just the culture, you know, like, you know, my, I would have like actually clients show up for a consultation and you know, the way that they're greeted, the way that, you know, other other agents would come in and out. And I don't want to say anything negative, but it just wasn't my stamp. It wasn't like the Wayner group stamp of what I wanted the, the experience to be for my clients and certainly not my team. And it was really expensive to rent the office space. And we pretty much had six people in one office. And we were like a sweatshop. Um, I swear, I'm, I'm surprised. Um, nothing, you know, I didn't call the police because, uh, you know, you're hearing somebody eat their chips and their lunch. You know, I, yeah. I have one of those uh, don't like to hear people eat things, but it was, it's great. I have my own office space now. Yeah. Um, and we all have our own office space and we're not on top of each other. So we have uh, really space to work and be, cre you know, creative. And, you know, so yeah, the um, having our own office space has definitely been um, a game changer for culture. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and you guys like, I mean, obviously you didn't skip a beat, which is awesome. So, I mean, the question that always intrigues me, I think, is that, you know, and, and when we talked at the beginning of this, everybody truly does have their own unique story to tell. And one of the questions, like I said, that is the most intriguing to me is that, you know, everyone has to at some point at least go and tell, you know, their broker or whoever's in charge of the office that they're leaving. And, you know, I've heard so many different stories um, as to how that's been done. I mean, some people have great relationships with their broker or team leader. Um, some people, you know, left on bad terms. Uh, and, and so I'm curious, like for you, tell me a little bit about like how you approached your broker when you guys decided that you were moving to eXp. Yeah, you know, it was. It was definitely we didn't leave on bad terms, so it wasn't really hard. My, um, I really um, respect the broker I was with. He runs an awesome business, and he um, he made it where you know if I were to go back to Remax, I would probably go back to his office because he was very gracious and you know wished me the best, and you know, and so I do know like uh, there have I know of other agents where the broker does make it hard, in which case you knew it was the right decision, you yeah. know that should never be with a broker that makes it hard for you to leave. Same thing with my team. If, we're, if there's a team member that wants to leave because they don't feel like it's a good fit, when it's done the right way, like we shouldn't be mad at each other just because it's not a business fit. Yeah. So, I mean, okay, so so you decide that, hey, you know what, we're going to eXp um, and you approach your broker and you just say, hey, you know what, thank you so much for everything that you've done for us. We really have enjoyed our time here, but you know, it's just best for us that we we kind of take this next step, essentially. Yeah. Yeah, I was just, I mean, there was an opportunity that obviously he couldn't match um, with EXP, so. Yeah. yeah, and so next question is, and I guess it naturally leads into this question is that, you know, you know, once you've made the decision, you personally have made the decision um, and, you know, you have this giant team. So how did you... <laughs> How did you announce it to your to your team that, you know, I think we're going to I think we're going to change companies because like you're I mean, in, in all reality, like everything's going great for you. You have a great yeah. you have a, a mega team. You guys are selling a lot of houses. Why throw a wrench in all that? You know what I mean? Like, like I'm sure that was what they're thinking. Yeah, it was actually not a good time for us to leave because we were onboarding 50 listings. It was more listings than we had ever had at one given time. We had 50 in escrow. 
which was more than we ever had at that point. And um, we didn't, we, we were really, things were falling through the cracks just because we were in hyper growth mode. Mm -hmm. And then it was throwing a wrench into the operation. Like, Hey guys, I know you're working a lot and you're like sometimes ending the day in tears because like, you know, it's things aren't going smoothly right now. And we're going to move offices. My marketing manager is amazing. She was handling all of our listing coordination. She um, managed all the office moved, planned all the furniture, got the printer up and running. Um, so, I mean, I, I luckily I had staff, um, but the way I presented it to them, I really just like said, hey, Dan, how did you present it to your team? And and it, and it was it was awesome because they saw the vision. So, I mean, our our role as a team leader is to be the visionary of the team and to make changes before we have to make changes. And I know the last time the market shifted, 2008, I wasn't prepared for the shift and it was financially devastating. And the last thing I want to have happen is that to happen again, I'm not prepared. And now it's not just me and my family that's devastated, but it, all the families that are with me, all the families that I feel responsible for. So I know they they trust me, my team trusts me that I'm not just making this decision like, you know, spur the, you know, just like, like I'm not quick to make moves like right. that are gonna change the, the destiny of the team or of their self. So they knew that I was doing it in the best interest of the team. And when I presented everything that, um, that EXP had to offer and the alignment with the teams that we were in business with, they saw the opportunity that I saw. Yeah, that that's, th there's a lot to unpack there. So, I mean, well, number one, I think you um, obviously have a great resource in Dan Beer, obviously. I had Dan on the show a couple weeks ago and I, I know Dan said that, you know, and he's got a huge team as well. But I think what was important to him is that, you know, first of all, that he got his leaders involved and kind of spread the message out from there. So I would assume that's probably the advice he gave you. Yeah. Yeah. It was really um, just like, hey, guys, you know, this is my role as a team leader. This is what I see. You know, it's not going to how is it going to affect you? It's not like you're not going to take your eye off the ball. We're just, if anything, well, it's not, if anything, we are going to create a lot more opportunities for you than yeah. we were with our other brokerage. So, so I kind of hear in your voice that like when you make a decision, like it, there's no turning back. Like you were, you, you know, you made that you did your due diligence and you, when you made the decision, it was like, I'm doing this. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, once my mind is made up, that's very true. <laughs> yeah, everybody's got to follow Jennifer, right? So yeah. I, I mean, I get it. And, and you know what? What, what we noticed, and I have a fifteen-person team. We have fifteen agents. We have um, two ISAs, uh, one for each marketplace that we're in, and then we also have uh, a contract manager and a listing manager. And so we had a lot of moving parts too. And um, so I can certainly identify with that. I think for for us, um, our story is is very similar in that you know. Um, you know, obviously you, you approach, you approach people differently because I mean, your C's, your S's and C's, um, you know, that's a different conversation, right? I mean, you're, because the, your S's and C's are, are your people that are, they don't want change, right? They fear change. And, and when you, when you talk about change, they panic. And then, you know, your D's and I's, I mean, then it's all about opportunity, right? You're just talking about, Hey man, there's this great opportunity. And, you know, they're all in about opportunity and, and your, you know, your eyes need to be coddled a little bit more. But, you know, so, so for us, like it wasn't easy. You know what I mean? It, the, the decision to come to EXP wasn't easy. The transition, um, the logistical piece of it, definitely not as easy, you know, with so many moving parts. But gosh, Jennifer, I'm so glad we did it. I have never been happier um, about a decision than I have one so and, and I'm sure I mean I can kind of see it in, in, in your face that you, you probably feel the same way yeah and you're you're totally right about the SC's my two top agents are SC's <laughs> so but they the the thing is that they believe in you right they believe they they know and my two top agents have been in real estate a long time so they know that it wasn't like oh yeah Remax helped us build our business Remax yeah. didn't help us build our business my broker didn't help us build our business it, at the end of the day it, it comes down to me so I definitely um, didn't do this because it was going to just be great for me and, you know, not good for my agents. I mean, we actually were, uh, I actually was um, offered ownership in a company and uh, which would have been great for me, but it wouldn't have helped my, my agents at all. It wouldn't have helped my team. So 
you know, I, if it was just me, it, I might've made a different decision. I don't think I would have, but I could have, yeah. um, but it really was for the team. Yeah. So uh, were you, I mean, was there any part of you that was reluctant to tell them? Were you scared of their reaction? What, what kind of, yeah. like, what kind of emotions did you go through? Like when you actually sat down to, to start to tell them? Um, yeah, there's always going to be fear um, when there comes to, you know, big decisions. Um, for me, I didn't, I would, I can't say that there was a lot of fear because again, I knew my broker, my brokerage wasn't helping me build my business. So it wasn't like, oh, is my business, and I was really excited. So it was hard to like be too scared when you're that excited about something. Yeah. So, and I, that's probably why like it, I didn't really have challenges with my team is because they saw my excitement. So why there was a little scared and it was more just like, okay, I know we're gonna have to go through some changes. We actually had our first team meeting. I presented EXP at our for, at our team meeting where we're sitting on the floor in my office because our furniture wasn't delivered yet. <laughs> so my I was so in a rush to move that I was actually on a cruise and my team moved the three desks we have in this 2,500 square feet space and they sent a picture, of, uh, uh, sent a picture to me while I was on the cruise. Yeah. <laughs> so. They didn't wait for me to get back. I didn't have to help them move. So, yeah. So, and so yeah, I mean, I, I can understand some people might be scared or, you know, there's anytime you're changing, you know, you're going to feel a little uncomfort, discomfort, sure. but um, that's normal anytime. Yeah. And, you know, so we've talked about kind of like, you know, why you made the move, when you made the move. So now that you've made the move um, and you've, you, you're, you've, you guys have been here long enough to kind of let the dust settle. Like, what does the future look like for you guys? Well, um, I we we continue to be aligned with more and more top producers. So, like on my team, um, three weeks ago, you know, an agent that I'd actually lost listings to in the past, um, you know, someone that I had known from, uh, he was with Keller Williams as well. Um, he's been in real estate 19 years and he moved on to my team because he saw the opportunity with EXP. So wow. it's great like to be partner with, now he's you know part of our team. Um, you know, there's been a number of like really uh, just awesome agents that have joined EXP and now we're aligned together in business. So it's definitely been the most collaborative time I've ever experienced, any kind of experience I've had since being in real estate. I know it was in, um, about a month ago, I was in San Diego and took a day off uh, out of a vacation to go by Dan Beer's office mm -hmm. and really just shadowed him. Um, when I was, I sat in on a group interview. I saw, uh, I was in his sales mastermind. Um, we talked about some business strategies and some structure of the team. Just some really, really like some nuggets that like, it's like really just get the wheels turning in my, in my brain. Yeah. So um, I know every week we are, um, we're learning. We have the fast forward movement webinars. Um, I'm starting um, every Wednesday a breakfast mastermind um, via uh, the cloud. So yeah. you know, anybody, whether you're in Tennessee or California, all of our partners would be able to, are going to be able to jump on. So it's, um, it's been awesome. It's been exciting. Um, we, I have grown our revenue share. Our, my second revenue share check covered my home mortgage. So, you know, I, I'm not going to, um, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I'm very excited about that because I don't want to worry about like, you know, come up to retirement and I, you know, dropped out at an open house because my hip gave out when I was nine years old. So, right. I, you know, I, I want, I definitely like want something at four kids. Um, you know, I want to be able to spend more time with them and, um, have an exit strategy right. rather than just like, just solely relying on, you know, commission checks where, Every time you cash a commission check, now you're unemployed again. And then I have to go start this over and over and over. So the transaction treadmill. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yep, definitely, definitely know about that. So you, you mentioned revenue share. And, and for those who are listening or watching us, um, what does revenue share mean? What does that mean? To, what does that mean? And what does it mean to you? Yeah, well, you know, I. I had I was aware with KW's profit share and when um, when I would see the uh, the checks that were being made to some of the top agents they would you know some of the agents would talk about it I it never that was I was actually I think KW is a great company I almost moved there before I went to Remax um, I I thought the training and what I thought the collaboration was I'd never have been with KW so I don't know you know exactly that was what was the most exciting to me because the profit share was was not. 
Yeah. Um, but uh, what I saw was there was actually real opportunity with revenue share because it wasn't based on the profitability. It wasn't based on if the market center is not profitable, your checks are going to be really small. <laughs> so, you know, the revenue share is coming off the top. And then what it, the agents that I saw, like what they were making with revenue share was real money. It wasn't taco money. It wasn't money that, you know, hopefully you can uh, afford to go to the movies at the end of the year. It was like, wow, this can be a real stream of income that's going to be yeah. Significant and my you know, it's gonna make a dent. I mean my second uh, check covered my home mortgage um, It's doubled since then. So it you know, it's it's definitely exciting <laughs> And you want know the funny thing is is that you're doing the exact same thing you were at Remax But now you've just added in these two additional layers of passive income Yeah, and you know, it really hasn't been I'm not I'm not like stopping selling homes. I'm not like getting on the dialer and cold calling agents. I'm not, you know, going to networking events and passing out my EXP card. It really has just been attraction, you know, like, hey, if I pour enough value out, like if the agents are, you know, they're are raising their hand to come talk to me and I'm just sharing my experience. So um, it, it's been really exciting and it's something I do very passively. It's not something that I'm, you know, working 40 hours a week at and I didn't get just I didn't pick up a second job but just sharing your story um, and and providing value is really um, been rewarding yeah and, and so for you what I'm hearing you say is that you know you you never joined to, to be a recruiter and you're not actively picking up the phone and asking agents to go to coffee so you can tell them more about exp mm -hmm. they're actually calling you and they're saying oh my gosh, Jennifer, like why would you ever leave Remax? And then you're simply yeah. sharing your story. Exactly, you know, I know I'm um, I'm a coach uh, for um, an, a Craig Proctor, you know, I'm one of our um, coaching members. He was, uh, he owned his own Remax brokerage and you know, people like him were like, okay, you were one of the top agents in the state of Arizona with Remax because he saw my name and you know, the leader, the, um, the scorecards or whatever you call them, the top 100, I was in Remax's top 100 agents in the nation. And um, he's like, well, you know, if you moved from Remax, there's got to be something. So it's, and so he actually paid uh, an attorney to get him out of his Remax contract so he could move over his whole brokerage over to EXP. Holy so cow, it's, and that worked. Conversations like that, like, hey, you, why did you make the change? Because, you know, I, we do a significant amount of business. My name's been out there. I've been in real estate a long time. Um, so, you know, it, people are asking, like, why did you move? And, you know, how's that been going for you? And yeah. You know, so it's just really the having conversations. Yep. And, you know, a, a big part of that, too, is influence. You know what I mean? Because like your production and getting to where you've gotten has created a certain level of influence. You know what I mean? And we all everyone has it, you know, over, you know, over over, you know, either one person or either, you know, 3000 people. If you're, you know, like Jay Kinder or Brent Gove. Right. So, you know, those guys have it and, and they've been they've been putting. Um, they've been putting money in their relationship banks for years and years and years, and they're finally starting to cash it in uh, because of the influence that they have. And that sounds like uh, you, you're, uh, you, you're doing a little bit of that as well. And you, your production has created your own influence, but you've also built some relationships over the years in your marketplace. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. I've been, you know, attending masterminds and, um, and really like, I like when 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 uh, I get asked to be on a panel, you know, or like at the Arizona School of Real Estate, I'll be teaching a class. I just wrote an article for the um, the paper they put out. You know, I'm I'm saying yes because I do think that you know, being a veteran in the industry, doing the production, I I feel that I am an example, and I really should uh, have you know, I, I feel it's you know my duty to help other agents because I was a new agent once, and um, and really it raises the bar of professionalism. Um, throughout our industry when more leaders step up and um, and offer to help. Yep. It's a win-win. You're right. Um, you know, you're providing value and in providing value, you're creating more influence. And, and by creating more influence, you, you're, you're, again, you're putting money in that, in that relationship bank and uh, you will cash it out over, over the years as you continue to build it up. Okay. So we'll, we'll wrap this up. And um, you know, I always ask people, the same question. Um, so to that agent or that broker that's watching or listening to us uh, uh, right now, um, who is considering a move to EXP, um, what do you say to that person? Um, let's go. <laughs> no, um, I, I mean, I'm, I'm here to 
pretty much just answer questions like what are what's most important to you are you looking to grow your real estate business if the answer is yes then they're a great fit for exp you know I, exp is not for every agent i'll put that out there right now if you're an agent that's happy with doing you know selling a few homes a year there's probably not you're not going to see the value here yeah. but if you're an agent that is intentional and wants to grow their real estate business they want to make more money they want to help more people then this is absolutely, I think, hands down the best opportunity that's out there. Yeah, and, and I'll piggyback on that in saying that there is not a better community of people in real estate to be able to connect with on literally a weekly basis uh, because like, where can you go in the United States or what company can you go to where you can jump in and Curtis Johnson's doing a training. You know what I mean? A guy that sold 400 homes. It was uh, 30 under 30. Brent Gove. I mean, these guys are like legends in the industry and like we're having phone calls with them. You know what I mean? It's like insane. And they're just, everybody comes from, you know, a place of abundance and everybody like yourself is just sharing information. It is such a great community and we built such a great culture. Yeah, absolutely. It's, I mean, being able to just plug into these powerhouses on a daily basis has just been rewarding beyond, you know, beyond my expectations for sure. Yep. Well, you sound like you've got a bright future here at eXp and I'm so happy to be working with you. I hope we bump into each other in New Orleans in October. Yeah. Uh, and um, so, you know, one last thing, if, if there's an agent uh, or a broker out listening to us right now, um, and they want to connect with you. How do they do that, Jennifer? Um, they can email me, Jennifer at jenniferwainer.com. Um, also, agentgamechanger.com is our uh, our website, so you can learn more about our story there. Awesome. Hey, thank you so much for taking a couple minutes out of your day to spend with me. I'm, you definitely have dropped some value, and and I know uh, I, I know we'll take uh, a lot away from from having you here. So thank you so much. Thanks, Mike. All righty. Bye. 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 All right.